So Gary, we're here in the beautiful Italian sunshine here in Northern Italy at Brescia, and we're back at the Palazzoli factory. And what are we looking at today? Let's just take a pause there. Palazzoli, a yeah. brand that might not be as familiar as it should be in the UK. Yeah. We're familiar with the brand Luden. Yes. And if you look very carefully at the logo, it says Luden Palazzoli. Yeah. So they partnered back in 2006, yeah. bringing together one large company making yeah. industrial outlets for the electrical industry. Yeah. But to get to that level of heritage, Joe, yeah. what sort of process is that to go through? Heritage is the key word, because Palazzoli have been around for over 100 years producing good quality products. And you don't get to be around for 100 years as a manufacturer unless you are producing good quality products. And so it's really the quality that we're focusing on in this video because we're gonna go and visit the Palazzoli accredited laboratory to see how they ensure that all of their equipment measures up to the correct standards yeah. and is tested to make sure that it's gonna function properly in the environment that it's going into. And we're really keen to see IP ratings. Absolutely. Talked about many times, but now we can actually see yeah. water being shot at an electrical enclosure yeah. and seeing the effect of that water and whether it will conform to the correct IP range. Absolutely. Right? And speaking of water testing, I think it's time we, uh, we dive straight in. <laughs> So Gary, we've come into what looks like a room for showering horses, so I'm feeling a little bit nervous and vulnerable here. So what are we doing in this room? I'm also concerned there's a gun in front of me that can shoot water out, because mm. we're in a room that will verify IP ratings. IP okay. standing for? Of course, that stands for Index of Protection, so that's what we're interested in here. And we're particularly looking against protection against the ingress of water in this test. So yeah. which particular IP rating are we looking at? Guys? We've jumped up to IPX6, mm. which is talking about jets of water, Joe. What sort of distance are we going to be shooting the water at from? So the standard requires that the gun is between two and a half and three meters away from the object being tested, and we can see the object being tested behind us. Now, at the moment, I think it's fair to say that the IP rating of that is somewhere in the zero range, because as soon as water starts spraying from that jet, that's going to get flooded. So what particular aspect of that enclosure is being tested today? Guys? Yeah, we're going to need to close the door. Yeah. Okay, and obviously that seal inside the door is going to be the one we're going to verify. We're also going to fire it not just at the front surface, Joe, we're going to mm. fire it what are the surfaces? We're going to be firing it on the left-hand side of the product and on the right-hand side of the product, and that's something that Palazzoli do themselves. The requirement is for a three-minute test, but Palazzoli like to go a little yeah. bit beyond and make sure that they hit every single side of it and not just get all sides wet, as the standard requires. So I think we should close that door, and I'm happy to get out the way first. <laughs> if I get the other side of there, I could fire us off. And then we can see that sustained three minutes of water yeah. and confirm it's IP range. Joe. I look forward to it. So we've just seen the first stage of the IPX6 test gas where we had that fantastic water jet spraying the box down. What's the next stage improving compliance with IPX6? The staff are gonna come in and they're gonna dry all the outside surfaces yep. and then they're gonna open it up and do a visual inspection within the enclosure to yep. see if water has actually ingressed within the enclosure. Brilliant, so we've seen IPX6 testing. Yep. How can we test for other IPX ratings? So if you went for IPX7, mm -hmm. the tank here yep. is where we submerse our enclosure. Right. And You'll notice that's over a meter it deep, is. so it gets right down to the bottom. It does. So if we wanted to go for, say, IPX5, yep. it's a simple case of changing the nozzle. Yep. However, you've got what looks like a garden hose in your hand, <laughs> okay, from the actual end. Absolutely. So what's that all about, Joe? So this is for testing for IPX4 and IPX3, so right. that's more about showers of water rather than jets of water, as we've seen here. And there's two modes to this. It can be tested without this front screen down, and you can see that that looks a bit like uh, the rose on a watering can. It does. And the idea is that that will test for IPX4. It sprays water at certain angles towards the object being tested. And then if we drop the screen down at the front, that now becomes a test for IPX3. Okay. And the water is slightly more diffused, slightly more dispersed, and not quite as direct onto the object, but it 
firm's compliance with that standard. So we can see this is a really exciting and interesting part of the process Brilliant. in order to conform to the IP rating required of the enclosure. So we're working our way from the far end of the Palazzoli lab to the door, because that's the way it's laid out here. And we've looked at the protection against the ingress of water, and what we're doing now is looking at the protection against the ingress of mechanical solids, aren't we, Gary? Yes, we are. So we're looking at the first number, so yep. IP5X. Yep. That's exactly. what we're going to be looking at. But in front of you here, you've got something that can do one of the earlier ratings. What Absolutely. have you got there? So this will test up to IP2. So okay. what this is doing, this is a standard finger. So you'll notice that it looks an awful lot like my finger. And the idea is that this is used on various products. You poke it in on various places and make sure that you can't contact anything live. So this is actually conductive through here. So it will, it will kind of buzz if you get uh, anything live through there. Now, here at Palazzoli, they don't produce any electrical products where you can potentially poke a finger inside. Everything's already much more sealed up than that. So what kind of ratings are we particularly interested in here, guys? So in this chamber here, we're looking at IP, say, 5X or IP um, 6X. So what we've got in here is actually talcum powder, Joe. So let's have a look inside. Actual talcum powder. Actual talcum okay. powder. Yeah. So as we open it up, so... Yeah, talc. Oh, right. Okay, that's interesting. And obviously that's going to be thrown against the object within right. there. So this hose that we can see here, uh, yeah. that's going to be spraying at the object and then, much like the water protection, we're going to be opening that up and seeing how much dust has got inside or if any dust has got inside. We certainly are. And to help you, there's also a wiper on the front screen. So you can look that. in as the little windscreen <laughs> wiper. <laughs> yeah, Brilliant. What a great bit of kit. So we set a chamber off and running Joe, and unlike the one where we did it for water, yep. this is going to be on for a considerably longer amount of time Absolutely. in order to verify either a light fitting or other enclosures. What yep. sort of times are we talking about? So in true Blue Peter style, you can see a luminaire here that's already been through this testing process, and this would have actually been inside that chamber for three hours, Ooh. so it's in there for a long time. But if you're testing anything apart from a luminaire, yep. it's in there for eight hours, so that's a really quite rigorous test of dust protection. In order to make sure that we conform to IP5X or maybe IP6X. Yeah, fantastic. So we move to another process now, Joe. We're looking at IK testing. You've given me a piece of string to balance a weight. I think that's on purpose. So yep. tell us all about it. I really don't want you to let go of that string yet, Gary. Okay. So what we're looking at here is the principle behind an IK test, and that's really an impact test. Yep. A weight is dropped that is a specific shape and a specific size and a specific mass from a specific height. <laughs> and all of those things combined give us an impact in joules against the product being tested. So this is the type of weight that would be used for uh, an IK test. Yep. So you can see there it's got quite a large rounded sphere on the end, which gives it quite a large contact area when it hits the object that it's gonna smack into. But what you're holding, Gary, is a slightly more rigorous test okay. because Palazzoli make products for the oil and gas industry. There's other uh, regulations that they need to comply with and standards that they need to comply with to ensure they're safe to use there. And when you let go of that weight, this has got a much smaller striking face on it, which applies more pressure when it hits that point. So it's gonna prove that this is acceptable for use in uh, perhaps an explosive environment. Okay. So this laboratory isn't all about IP ratings, no. Joe. There's other stress tests that the equipment's got to go through. Absolutely. This one looks crazy over here, Joe. What's going on? This is fantastic. What we've got here are three 300 amp power supplies, and they're connected up uh, in star. So we've got actually a, a fake generator here, okay. effectively. And what we can do is we can pump massive amounts of current through the equipment that's under test, okay. taking it up to its testing value, taking it up to say, uh, this one is 125 amps. So we can pump 125 amps through this device and make sure that it can handle that amount of current. And we can take it beyond that value absolutely, as well, can yes, we, to yeah. actually stress it out. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. It's got a great bit of kit. 
So this one, we like it linked into a previous video that we looked at, yeah. where we had the industrial plug and socket, Joe. Yeah. Okay, but what's this machine gonna do in relationship to the industrial plug and socket we've seen before? So I don't know if you remember those IKEA adverts that they used to do, and sometimes when you walk around the factory, they have a machine that's sitting down on a chair like 10,000 times. This is that exact same principle. You can lock uh, your plug and socket yeah. into the two parts of this sort of modified lathe. Okay. And then there is a uh, actuator on the end here, which will actually plug and unplug Ooh. the socket many, many times to make sure that it retains its integrity even after it's been plugged in and out loads. So Gary, we've seen some environmental factors already that we've tested for, but what other things are we looking at in the laboratory as well? So we've got to take into consideration things such as humidity yep. and temperature. Yeah, so we've got a humidity testing device here, yeah. And behind it, we've got one that can do temperature, yep. as well as things that are going to be thrown up by nature, maybe okay. salt water. Right, so if we've got products that are going into a marine environment, it needs to be proved that the salt in the atmosphere and in the water Absolutely. isn't going to damage that product. And we've actually got yeah. a salt water testing machine there as well. Yeah, which is really interesting. Mm. So Gary, I'm sure you'll agree that that was an absolutely fascinating experience to be able to go around the lab here at Palazzoli yeah. and see some of the fantastic machines that they use and some of the really intricate processes that equipment has to go to to prove that it meets the requirements for the areas that it's going to be installed in. Yeah, stand in that classroom for all those years stating IP, what yeah. does it stand for? And then obviously the letters and numbers are attributed afterwards yeah. to actually see the process that a product goes through in order to achieve an IP rating yeah. was fantastic and probably the highlight for me of what was going on in that laboratory. Absolutely. So we'd like to say thank you very much to Palazzoli for letting us have access there and we hope you've enjoyed watching this video.